Good morning, students. Warm welcome to today's session, organized by Chennai Corporation. Now look at the clipping that is displayed on the board. Make guesses what topic is to be covered today. Have you made guesses? Yes. Today I am going to cover about the cardiovascular system. So the topics that is to be covered today are what is cardiovascular diseases, the symptoms of cardiovascular diseases, the circulation part, the structure of the heart and then the risk factors that cause cardiovascular diseases, the role of blood lipids and the cardiovascular diseases and finally the dietary management that is to be followed during cardiovascular diseases. What is cardiovascular diseases? You would have all heard so many people died due to a heart attack and chest pain and so on. What are cardiovascular diseases? Cardiovascular diseases are diseases that occurs in the heart and related blood vessels. Now the symptoms of cardiovascular diseases are listed here. They experience dizziness, shortness of breath, they might have chest pain, shoulder pain and also palpitations during that time. You would have heard so many people telling they suffered, they were all talking very nicely but suddenly they passed away. It is because of heart attacks, the obstruction of blood flow to the heart. Now we are going to see the structure of the heart. Heart is a muscular organ which is conical in shape. It weighs about 300 grams in men and 250 grams in women. It is enclosed in a sac called pericardium. Now have a look at the picture. Now this picture clearly shows you the structure of the heart. The heart is divided into four chambers, two auricles and two ventricles. The upper part is called the auricle and the lower parts, lower chambers are called the ventricles. Now this right auricle is connected to the right ventricle through tricuspid valve and the left auricle is connected to the left ventricle through bicuspid valve. Now if you clearly look at the picture, the right side is marked by blue color and the red side is denoted by red color. The right side shows that it carries deoxygenated blood and the left side shows it carries oxygenated blood. The right auricle receives deoxygenated blood from upper part of the body and lower part of the body through superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Likewise, the deoxygenated blood flows to the right auricle and then to the right ventricle. The tricuspid valve allows the blood from the right auricle to the right ventricle only in one direction. And from the right ventricle, the blood flows through the pulmonary artery to the lungs for purification. Usually, artery carries only oxygenated blood. But this pulmonary artery is an exception which carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs for purification. Now, coming over to the left side, the left auricle receives simultaneously oxygenated blood from the pulmonary vein from the lungs and it passes on to the left ventricle through bicuspid valve. From the left ventricle, the blood flows through the iota to various parts of the body. So this is about the structure of the heart. So this is also, you can clearly see the picture, all the parts are marked in the picture. Now we will see the circulation process. It clearly shows you how the blood flows. So from the right auricle to the right ventricle and then to, to the lungs through pulmonary artery, simultaneously the purified blood or the oxygenated blood flows from the left auricle to the left ventricle and then through the iota to the various parts of the body. Now we will look at the different forms of cardiovascular diseases. There are various cardiovascular diseases like angina, coronary heart diseases, atherosclerosis, stroke heart attack and so on. Now look at this atherosclerosis. What is atherosclerosis? It is a process 
where accumulation or deposition of cholesterol in the coronary arteries leading to obstruction of blood flow. Now look at this picture. Now the first picture shows the normal coronary artery. Okay, so it is very clear the blood flows normally. But look at the next picture where the cholesterol deposits are found in the coronary artery thereby leading to obstruction of blood flow resulting in heart attack. So this is called as atherosclerosis. So many people are affected by this disease called atherosclerosis. And then we move on to stroke. What is stroke? Stroke is the obstruction of blood flow to the brain obstruction of blood flow to the brain leading to stroke. There are various risk factors that causes heart diseases. Risk factors are classified into two types modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. Modifiable risk factors are factors that can be controlled or prevented. Now look at the modifiable risk factors. Diabetes, high blood cholesterol, high blood pressure, smoking, physical inactivity or sedentary lifestyle and obesity. These factors can be altered or modified so that heart diseases can be prevented. Now smoking, it directly affects the heart. It makes the heart work harder and faster. And also physical inactivity or sedentary lifestyle leads to excess body weight thereby leading to obesity and other complications like diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Then we move on to non-modifiable risk factors. The non-modifiable risk factors are age, gender and genetic factor. Above the age of 55, people are mainly affected by cardiovascular diseases and mostly men are affected by heart diseases. Women after menopause, they are also affected due to the low production of ovarian hormone estrogen. If parents or grandparents are affected, children are also prone to cardiovascular diseases. Now, we move on to lipids, the role of lipids and cardiovascular diseases. Lipids are fats and fat related components present in blood. The various components present in blood are cholesterol, triglycerides and the lipoproteins. Cholesterol and triglycerides are the two main lipids present in blood and these lipoproteins carry fat and cholesterol to the tissue for metabolism and in turn from the tissue to the liver for excretion. Now this looking at this lipoproteins look at the HDL the high density lipoprotein and the low density lipoprotein. The high density lipoprotein is considered as good cholesterol whereas low density lipoprotein is called as bad cholesterol. Now this good cholesterol is found in fish, in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, egg, whole grains, oil and nuts whereas LDL is present in all baked items, processed foods and fried foods. We saw the foods that are rich in high density lipoprotein and that rich in low density lipoprotein. Now look at HDL. This high density lipoprotein transport cholesterol from the tissue to the liver for excretion whereas this LDL low density lipoprotein which is called as bad cholesterol transport cholesterol to the tissues and also promotes to accumulate cholesterol in the arteries leading to various heart diseases. Now the final part we move on to the dietary management of cardiovascular diseases. So the principles of diet will be to recommend low calorie diet, low fat diet, high fiber diet, normal protein and vitamins and minerals for a cardiovascular patient. Now moving to the low calorie foods, foods rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains are all low calorie foods. Now look at this picture, you see a balanced diet, a balanced diet is recommended for heart diseases and also you see in this picture people buying fresh fruits and vegetables instead of going for processed foods. It is also recommended to include greens, 
fruits and vegetables that is rich in fiber and sprouts to increase the protein content of the diet some of the foods which also offers cardioprotective full effect are green tea black tea tomato soya proteins nuts legumes garlic whole grains and dark chocolate students you all like chocolates isn't it dark chocolate contains antioxidants which reduces the low density lipoprotein that is the bad cholesterol look at this picture i know you all like these junk foods but these junk foods these processed foods carbonated beverages all lead to cardiovascular diseases so it is better to avoid them and better to opt for fruits and vegetables smoking again as already we have discussed it's a major risk factor so avoid smoking and also avoid stress stress also leads to cardiovascular diseases so avoid stress stress relaxation techniques like meditation yoga involving walking gardening listening to music can be followed to reduce cardiovascular diseases so the recommendations to reduce risk for cardiovascular diseases is maintain a healthy body weight so that energy intake should be balanced with the energy expenditure so physical activity is a must to reduce to reduce cardiovascular diseases include variety of whole fruits and vegetables and whole grains so that excess body weight can be reduced limit intake of saturated fat to less than 7% of calories now saturated fat is present in animal foods like meat poultry and baked foods so avoid saturated fat reduction in cholesterol below 200 mg per day is advisable control food portion size as well as plan ahead the menus so that without hurry bury people can take a balanced diet and also reduce sodium in diet which leads to various complications like hypertension and thereby leading to diabetes and so on so students we have come to the end of this session so today we have seen what are cardiovascular diseases the symptoms of cardiovascular diseases structure of heart the various risk factors that causes cardiovascular diseases the role of lipids in cardiovascular diseases and finally the dietary management and principles of diet so i hope you all enjoyed this session thank you